Hey there, everyone. It's Kelly from Kelly's Astrology here. Welcome back. Today, I want to share a few thoughts about Mars retrograde in Gemini, and in particular, some of the self-care strategies that I think might be really helpful through this retrograde. Of course, there is so much that can be said about Mars retrograde in Gemini. I've got, you know, technical info I could share. I've got a personal story that I'm going to share in a future video. But for now, I want to make sure you've got the basics of what's happening and when. And then I'm going to talk about very briefly what I think is happening in excess with this Mars retrograde in Gemini. And then that'll lead us straight into the self-care strategies that I think we're all going to need to draw on over the two and a half months that Mars is retrograde in Gemini. So just before I dive into that, I want to make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel. If you're enjoying my videos here on YouTube, just hit the subscribe button and you'll get notified of new videos when they're shared. If you want even more astrology from me, please pop over to my website, kellysastrology.com. I have a monthly membership that will help you time your life with astrology. I have an 18-month astrology training program. I have specialized classes on particular topics in birth chart interpretation, as well as time timing techniques. So if you need to learn something about astrology, it might be something that I can help you with. And you'll find all the details over on my website, kellysastrology.com. So Mars retrograde in Gemini, it's one of the big astrological events in this final three months of 2022. And in fact, the very start of 2023. So Mars uh, is spending a total of seven months in the sign of Gemini. And part of that time, Mars will be retrograde, which is like reversing or moving backwards through the zodiac. So here's some dates and details for those of you who want the data. Mercury will start its retrograde on Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday, October 30th, and Mars will be stationing retrograde at 25 degrees Gemini. Mars will end its retrograde on January 11th, 2023. And at that point in time, Mars will have reversed all the way back to eight degrees of Gemini. So Mars retrograde starts October 30th and ends January 11th. The part of the Zodiac that Mars is going to be reversing through will take us from 25 Gemini back to eight Gemini. Now in the membership, I've talked a lot about the technical info and I'm might share some more here on YouTube in future videos, but for now, I kind of want to get straight into one thing that I think is going to be happening in excess and then some of the self-care tips. So um, we now have this really long period with both malefic planets, Mars and Saturn, in the air signs. We know Saturn's in Aquarius. It's been there for a couple of years. Saturn will end its tour through Aquarius in March of 2023. So we are kind of in the final act, the last piece of Saturn in Aquarius. Mars in Gemini for that seven month period. So Mars first moved into Gemini around the 20th of August and Mars will stay in Gemini until late March of 2023. So that's kind of that seven month span that we're talking about. So in that time frame, August 2022 to March of 2023, we've got Mars and Saturn both in air signs. And because Mars and Saturn, they're not always problematic, but they can create this sort of general tendency. And when I see some of these more malefic placements, you know, Mars and Saturn maybe up to mischief, so to speak, in the air signs, what it gives me a little bit of um, pause around is this agitated mental energy. So with Mars and Gemini, we know Gemini is a sign of the mind and communication. It's a sign ruled by Mercury. It's about thinking and the intellect and it's also about technology, how we connect with each other. Uh, Mercury is also a planet about the merchant and the marketplace. So business um, and some economic matters can also be tied to Mercury. So Mars is spending a long time in this sign ruled by Mercury in Gemini. Mercury's air sign, if you like. And so we're going to have this excess of uh, agitated, overstimulated energy that is affecting the mind. So a general thing to watch out for when Mars is retrograde in Gemini is going to be this kind of busy mind, the monkey mind that is constantly darting around from topic to topic, never settling on anything, never finishing anything, and never finding that place of calm. 
So there is sort of this heightened overdoing it energy in the mind that I see with Mars in Gemini. And sure, we could talk about how to remediate that or how to manage that in terms of like reducing exposure to technology or narrowing your focus rather than getting scattered. But the thing is, when we get these kind of slightly more problematic or challenging energies affecting air signs, the answer is not more information and more data. The answer is often to come into the body. Now with the planet Mars, taking action is going to be really good, but more thinking, more information and more planning, not great. So maybe you're going to conduct some experiments. You're going to be curious to try and see what happens. Could be another way of working with Mars retrograde in Gemini. I always think of planetary retrogrades as a chance to review and redo. And that can mean questioning why I do things the way I do. And perhaps, you know, being curious as to whether there's a different way that might be in some ways better that I hadn't thought about, you know, that idea of you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes trying random things or doing things outside your comfort zone is a way of figuring out, oh, I didn't know that about this thing or about that habit or about that routine. And now that I know it, I'm going to stick with what I know. Or now that I know that, I can change what I was doing, depending on what it is you discover. But when I've worked with clients over the years who are having, you know, a lot of air sign activation, overthinking is its like own kind of little issue. And what tends to be most helpful is the antidote or the opposite and of course, the ideal of overthinking would be like this beautiful Zen meditative state, but we are living in the 21st century and <clears throat> many of us have busy lives with kind of multiple things happening at once. And one way to manage all of that, that kind of hectic frenetic energy, which is definitely Mars retrograde in Gemini, is to come back to our body. Breathing is going to be the core physical skill to focus on while Mars is in Gemini. Most of us don't breathe properly. We breathe really shallow from like the diaphragm up. We're breathing up here or we're breathing up here. But we actually have the capacity to, be, to breathe through the whole torso. We can breathe belly out, sides out. Even in yoga and Pilates, the idea of like imagining the back ribs opening. So learning how to breathe better is a great self-care strategy, probably my number one tip for the Mars retrograde. Deeper belly breathing will calm your nervous system. It helps to take you out of your mind, even just for a moment, gives you something to focus on that isn't the 25,000 things going on around in there, but it's raising the belly with the breath, pushing the side body out and so on. For me, I'm not the best breather. That's how I know about how many of us breathe badly uh, or don't breathe deeply enough. I find when I go to a yoga class or a Pilates class, in addition to the stretching and the movement benefits, I feel calm afterwards because just by its nature, I breathe more through my nose. I breathe in time with my movement. And that adds this kind of general calming effect. And so for me, in terms of this self-care and getting in the body when Mars is in Gemini, I'm making sure I get to a yoga class each week, that I do some Pilates each week. I love to go to a class because I like the group dynamic. It's also very Gemini. But if that's not available to you in your area or your price point, there's lots of great resources for yoga and belly breathing and Pilates online. Uh, and I would encourage you if you've never done yoga or Pilates or breathing before, just look for an introductory 10 minutes, something. The funny thing with breathing and stretching, you don't need to do an hour and a half. You don't always even need to do an hour, 10, 15, 20 minutes will make a noticeable benefit for you. So that's kind of what that looks like for me is making more time for these practices, even to the extent of like, I've got a yoga mat in my office right now. I'm working outside our home at the moment, which is not usual for me. I've worked at home for 20 years now, uh, but in the personal Mars retrograde story, which I'll share, we are doing some renovations at our home. And so I'm working outside the home for the moment. 
but I made sure to bring a yoga mat in with me so that in the middle of the day, if I feel a bit mentally fatigued or if I've done some highly intense online work, I can put the yoga mat down and just take 10 or 15 minutes and do some stretching or a couple of really simple poses. Uh, just, it's not fancy. I'm not a fancy yoga Pilates person. I just know what makes my body feel good and what helps me get kind of out of that frenetic head energy and back into my body. So there are a couple of things that I'm doing. There's a couple of other things I'll talk about. Uh, but have you tried Pilates and yoga? Do you uh, do they help you? Do you like walking around the block by yourself? What are some of the simple like breath work or gentle movement exercises? that you might be trying. Keep in mind that when we're talking about movement as a way of caring for ourselves through the Mars retrograde in Gemini, we're not necessarily talking about movement for intensity or to achieve a goal like um, losing weight or increasing your strength and weight tone or what have you, weightlifting skills. It's more about movement and breathing as a way of calming the mind. Now, if you get some physical benefits as well, like maybe you sleep better or your digestion's better, or it helps balance your hormones, you know, different exercises do different things. That's great. That's like a side benefit. But the key here is to kind of calm the mind. So uh, that's really important as the movement. One thing I kind of alluded to is that with this sort of frenetic, excessively stimulated uh, mental energy with Mars and Gemini, a lot of technology is going to be tricky. And if you find yourself in that overthinking, overanalyzing, like hard to stop that busy mind, some really basic general writing, we could call it journal writing, but I like to think of it as the brain dump kind of writing. There's this funny thing in, that I learned uh, as a sort of a, a self-care, so self almost therapeutic technique, which is that writing down your worries, your agitations, your frustrations, your irritations, writing them down on the page changes how you relate to them. And it can give you a bit of space to help you deal with them. There's something about, you know, the idea of mulling over and ruminating and, you know, going like cuckoo in your mind about, oh, I just can't stop thinking about this or obsessing about it. When it's inside you, it feels a part of you. You feel it's, 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 you know, there's no space between you and the thing. And when you write it down on a piece of paper, you create what's called therapeutic distance. And even though the thing, the event, that thing you wish you said, that thing you regret that you did say, uh, you know, that hasn't changed, but now it's on the page and it's outside of you. And you can kind of contemplate it a little bit more objectively with a little bit of distance. And weirdly that calms our brains down. So that's another little tip, uh, writing down worries, agitations, irritations, and frustrations. I think with Mars retrograde in Gemini, part of it is just understanding that you might have a shorter fuse, that you might be quicker to react, that you might be kind of at or even over your capacity of multitasking. There may be sort of too much going on and that one extra thing that you can normally squeeze in, you just might not be able to manage it now. If you notice yourself getting short-tempered or frustrated or snappy with people or in situations that you're normally quite chill in, that could be a clue that that Mars in Gemini scattered energy might have got, got you without you realizing it. And using that slaying sword of Mars to cut things away or say no is going to be helpful. Really what I'm getting at here is the need to create space. And with Mars and Gemini, you might be suffering because you don't have mental space. You don't have time to think things through or talk things over before you have to act on something. So that creates a real pressured, stressed out sense inside of us. One other thing that I'm doing as a way of, you know, and I, I sort of also talked about the idea of this overstimulation and maybe that coming from too much interaction with social media or online platforms. And one thing I'm working, I'm doing to kind of um, manage that for myself is I'm trying to get to the sauna once a week. Uh, even just for half an hour, because that's an, an environment where there's no phones that you kind of bring in with you. Uh, so it forces me to sit with a book for half an hour. And that is more calming for me than reading things online or electronically with devices. And so even that switch of getting off technology and getting into something old school, which is tactile or paper-based, like reading your ma favorite magazine or newspaper in print rather than online, 
it's just a little more calming. We take the information in at a deeper level. We contemplate things more and we take ourselves out of that kind of scroll, 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 which is contributing to this overstimulation. In it, like continuing that theme of self-care, getting in the body, cooking, cook a, cook a meal from scratch. Maybe you can't do it on a weeknight, but maybe you can do something on the weekends. Uh, what we're trying to engage here are the senses to bring us back into that tactile, physical realm. Because Mars and Gemini is not that, and Mars and Gemini is not that in a way that is a little bit excessive and unbalanced. And, you know, we have to remember that we are physical animals and our bodies and our internal systems do have some really important needs uh, that don't involve constantly thinking and using our brains all the time. Now, of course, if you're cooking and you're following a recipe, there is a little bit of thinking, but you're in an environment where there is some sensory stimulation. You'll be smelling the onions and the garlic cooking in the olive oil. You'll be chopping things with your hand, you know, and different foods or vegetables or meats that you cut feel different. Um, and then of course, when you sit down to eat the food, you've got the tastes and uh, all those textures. And of course the smell changes from when you start with the onions and garlic to if you add the meat and the veggies and then the spices. So figuring out how you might be able to have a little bit of that cooking sensation rather than just getting your food on your app, on your phone and having it show up to your door. I can describe these things so well because I'm so guilty of that myself. I'm so guilty of that myself. Of course, it's a busy, fast paced life that we're all living. And sometimes what I'm doing at the moment is on a Sunday or a Monday, which are my days off right now, I'm doing some batch cooking. I'm making up a really fragrant stew or soup or casserole so that I can at least reheat that during the week and have some of that nourishing kind of really richly flavored food. I'm trying to make a point of not just using salt and pepper, like getting some great herbs and spices in so uh, that could be something for you as well. But, you know, I was thinking, what does Mars and Gemini like in the kitchen? Mars and Gemini would like the gadgets. And, you know, sometimes we buy these devices or machines that will do things in the kitchen and we don't quite get around to using them. I think this could be a time to experiment, you know, get it out. What does this gadget do? How does this thing work? Just bringing a little bit of technology in, but staying in that primarily sensory space of the smell and the taste and all of that type of thing. Even the sound, you know, of the onions or the mushrooms in the pan. If you really can't get your head around cooking, fair enough, but see what else you can do to bring sensory stimulation in. Because when we activate the senses, we ground ourselves. So maybe there is a fragrance that you want to have in your home. Maybe there's an essential oil or some incense or some other way of, you know, fragrancing your home that you might enjoy. Maybe it's fresh flowers. Uh, maybe there's sounds, maybe there's some music that is calming or soothing or mellowing for you that you're going to keep on. Um, what I find, you know, with our modern brains is that we can be so stimulated that going to a place of silence can be a little uncomfortable or confronting. And so sometimes turning the TV off, but putting music on, it's just one less level of mental aggravation, if you like. Uh, sometimes having music is a way of giving you something to focus on so that another part of your brain can kind of go into its deeper state. And that's also why if you are thinking about exploring meditation, if you already meditate and you have a great practice, then yes, uh, Mars in Gemini retrograde is a great time to keep up that meditation practice. If you're thinking, oh my God, I have to do something about this busy mind of mine, if it's only going to get a little bit worse when Mars goes retrograde, maybe start with something really easy and simple, like a guided meditation. Again, that gives one part of your brain something to focus on and follow, and it allows the other parts of your brain to to kind of go into that resting state. It's a good introductory or beginner way of uh, diving into meditation if that's a new space for you. Final tip, self-care tip for Mars in Gemini is that this can be a little bit drying. Now, the sign of Gemini is an air sign and has a moisture component, but Mars doing anything for an extended period is going to tend to dry things out a little bit. And so I think moisture and hydration is going to be an important self-care strategy. That can mean a few things to a few different people. Uh, hydration can be an internal thing. So making sure you drink enough water every day, but actually we get more of our hydration from the foods that we eat than the liquids that we consume. 
consume. And hydrating foods are basically fruits and vegetables. Now, I'm not a huge fruit eater, but I do have my apple a day. I love cooked veggies. I love veggies in a baked veggies in the oven. I loved veggies in a stew or a casserole or a curry of some kind. However, you're going to get your veggie intake in, keeping in mind that different body types don't, you know, do do differently with different kinds of veg. Some people can tolerate raw. For most of us, like cooked or steamed veggies is a little easier on our system. So think about, you know, how you want to get your veggies, especially if it's winter time for you, like it is going to be for me. Think about those veggies being warm, cooked rather than cold and raw but that's a little bit of an aside. The idea here is hydrating. So maybe some extra serves of fruit or veg, whatever is appropriate for your digestive process and making sure you are hydrating. It might mean cutting out things that are dehydrating, like high salt salt foods, um, high caffeine foods, alcohol, um, high sugar foods, some of my favorites, you know, Uh, but maybe cutting down or alternating, you know, some dehydrating things with more hydrating things because hydration is going to be really important. The moisture to keep things supple is what we're kind of talking about. The gentle movement we talked about, stretching, yoga, Pilates, walking, swimming, those kinds of things all have hydrating kind of influences, especially stretching. Uh, You know, however, if you have, maybe you just have a stretch practice, you're not doing like official yoga or Pilates, that's okay. The stretching is the key. Uh, So we're talking about hydration kind of internally with the movement, but also like fluids and foods that are high in hydration. But you might also think about using like oil in your skincare or evening routine. Maybe there's some rosehip oil or some almond oil that you're using. It's a little bit of a barrier to this sort of generally drier tone. The season of autumn um, does have a drier quality to it anyway. So some of these moisturizing tips, uh, moisture tips are kind of good at this time of year in general. But I think Mars is just bringing a little bit of dryness for an extra long period into a place where moisture is good. The other thing that is the opposite, so dry in the astrological kind of um, uh, way of using the word is things that are separated or disconnected. And so if we're trying to avoid dryness or reduce dryness or kind of remediate against dryness, we're going to want to stay in connection. So we're not going to want to isolate ourselves. We're going to want to stay in contact, not with everybody, because that's what Mars and Gemini is kind of, you know, that could be an excessive imbalance thing. But thinking about your core group of people, your closest friends, if there are family members that you love and adore, maybe some colleagues that you enjoy their company quite genuinely, we want to make sure we keep the connection there so that we're not letting things kind of dry out, stagnate or separate. Okay, that's a little longer than I intended to go, but hopefully that gives you a few self-care tips to explore and play around with over the next few weeks, even the next couple of months as Mars retrogrades through Gemini. And if you are looking for more astrology from me, I hope to see you in my monthly membership where we talk all about the aspects that are happening every week so you'll get everything you need to know to time your life with astrology. All right, everyone, if you've got questions, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel here and I'll see you next time.